Basics. What is a personality disorder? Personality traits, which everyone has, you know, are enduring patterns of interacting with others, perceiving the universe, and even thinking about oneself. Um, so these are the things that make you you. Oh, these are little quirks or characteristics that you have that people can actually predict. Now, as I mentioned, since everyone has personality traits, they become personality disorders when those personality traits become maladaptive, you know, interfere with your ability to function socially, occupationally, and um, they're often very inflexible. So, for example, I think, you know, you have a certain way of dealing with the universe that may not necessarily be maladaptive. Where it becomes maladaptive and turns into a personality disorder, and what we see clinically, is when people use to have the same way of dealing with the universe in every single situation. You know, I think a mentally healthy person would have some flexibility. They'd be able to look at it, assess the situation and go, oh, hey, I should handle this this way. And in a different situation, you switch gears and handle it a different way. What are cluster A personality disorders? The clusters were created more for discussion purposes rather than having any true clinical importance or significance. Um, but cluster A consists of paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal personality disorders. They are part of the so-called schizophrenia spectrum. In other words, they may actually represent milder variants of uh, schizophrenia. So if you think about having schizophrenia out here, and maybe the personality disorders here with schizoaffective in there, they represent a continuum in terms of severity of illness. I think um, there's some evidence to suggest that people with paranoid schizoid and schizotypal personality disorders are seen more frequently in the first degree relatives of patients with schizophrenia. They may actually also represent comorbid diagnoses, in other words, Patients who later go on and develop schizophrenia may actually have these personality disorders prior to actually developing uh, schizophrenia. I think this, this particular cluster is the one in which there's probably the strongest argument for a genetic component to personality disorders or some kind of biological basis. What are cluster B personality disorders? These are the sort of more dramatic personality disorders. I would tell you there's probably more literature on these. You know, if you were to look at the amount of paper, you know, here's cluster A, here's cluster B, you know, just tons of uh, things that have been written and, and uh, discussed about these personality disorders. Cluster B is antisocial, borderline, histrionic, and narcissistic personality disorders. They're discussed in one cluster, I think, because there's quite a bit of overlap. You'll see people with features of more than one um, quite frequently among these four. And, um, but there isn't really this strong genetic component uh, that one can discuss as with cluster A. What are cluster C personality disorders? Cluster C consists of avoidant personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. What these three personality disorders share is that an intense amount of anxiety. These people are incredibly anxious. And um, there's quite a bit of overlap between dependent and, and avoidant personality disorder. However, I'd tell you that obsessive compulsive probably stands more by itself um, from a clinical standpoint in terms of the symptoms. However, again, they all share that common anxiety component.